Today we're going to be taking a look at creating a uh, application that has both a Rails app and a React app running at the same time. But we're going to be running both of the applications through the same command. This allows us to stop and start both our uh, API as well as our front end application at the exact same time. And as a bonus, I have another Rails app running on a regular port 3000. This is the Linktree course website right here. Uh, and we'll keep this one running just so that you can see that we have um, some extra stuff happening with the form and gem where all of this is just being handled in a very smooth manner. So to start, the first thing we have to do is uh, run a gem install foreman. And you're going to be installing this as a global gem. You're not going to be doing a bundle add. Uh, if we come over to the GitHub repo for the foreman gem, you can see that in here it tells us that Ruby users should take care to not install foreman in their uh, project's gem file. And then there's a wiki article, which I'll link in the video description, that explains why you don't want to include it in your, uh, in your gem file. Make sure you don't add this to your gem file. Make sure it's just installed as a global gem. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use Vite to create a React app. And the only reason I'm using Vite here instead of the NPX Create React app, uh, well, I guess there's two reasons. One, I like Vite more uh, because it lets me do more than just create React apps. But uh, it's also a lot faster. <laughs> so you'll see what I mean here in a second. We're going to start by creating a new Rails project first. And we're just going to type Rails new. We'll call this foreman-video. And I'm going to pass the dash dash API flag here to give ourselves an API because that's also a bit quicker. We can then CD into our foreman dash video uh, project. And then from in here, we'll just run a code dot to open this up in VS code. Once that's done, uh, we can do, I guess, something a little bit basic here and we can just run a rails G scaffold. We'll call this post. We'll give each post a title and a body of type text just so that we have something to test around with. Once that's done, let's go ahead and run a Rails DB colon migrate command to migrate the database. And then we can run a Rails S just to do a bit of a check. And that's not going to work because I have the Linktree clone running. So let's do a Rails S with a uh, dash P for port 3001. That'll give us a application here that we can open as our Rails app. So once that's done, we can come over to slash posts and you'll see that we have our posts array being displayed here. Now, the next thing we can do is come into our config and our uh, initializers and then our cores.rb and we just want to uncomment this and we're gonna set the origins for this just to be an asterisk. This, as you'll recall from other tutorials, is just coming from our gem file. In here, we have a cores gem this rack dash cores, which we're going to uncomment. You can then stop the server, run a bundle install command to install the cores rack gem, and then we can run a rails s command again to start our server. Except we have to run it with the dash p3001. And the reason why we're doing that is to sort of stress how this can get a little bit cumbersome if you have multiple servers running. So what we have here now is a app with controllers and posts. And in this post controller, I just like to be able to grab this from a JavaScript app. So let's create our JavaScript app now. We'll go ahead, we'll stop the server. We'll come in here and we'll say uh, npm create vite. This could also be your npx create react app if you want to go that route. But we'll run the create vite. We'll call the project front end. It doesn't matter what you call it. Just make sure you replace front end wherever I type it with the name of your project, basically. Now you have a couple options here with Vite. I'm going to go with React. You can also create a Svelte app or a Vue app if, you, if you'd like. And then we have React or React TS. I'll just create a React app because it really doesn't matter. Next thing we have to do is come into our front end and then run a npm install command. Once we do this, uh, it'll install all of our dependencies. But while this is running, it's a good time to talk about this. Uh, when we create the setup for our foreman gem to run both servers, these are sort of the steps that you're going to want to follow to make sure that you are doing everything properly. So what we'll do now is we'll just start our server by running whatever command we need to. And here it's said to run uh, npm run dev. So we'll just do that. So we'll say npm, oops, 
Uh, I guess my formatter doesn't like that. We'll say npm run dev, and then that should run it on port 3001 because we're no longer running our Rails server here, and that will start our Vite app. So now we have a React app here that we can use, uh, but of course we are trying to connect this to our Rails app. Now, because this is first and foremost a form and gem tutorial, we're going to skip that. We're going to cover the form and part, and then we'll set up the API call real quick. So for the actual form and part, what we have to do is CD out of our front end. And then once we're out of our front end, we have to right click in VS Code, create a new file, call it a uh, proc file, no uh, extension, just proc file. And then once we're in here, we have to uh, do two things. First one is we have to give our server a name and then a command. So in this case, our first server, we're just gonna call the API, and this is gonna be for our Rails server, so we're just gonna run Rails S. We're then going to have a second command, which is going to be for our front end, and you can call these, these whatever you wanna call them. Uh, but for, for this one, we're gonna run npm run dev, and you're gonna see why this doesn't work in a second here, uh, but I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna delete this name command. So we're gonna have a API Rails S here, and then we're gonna have a npm run dev command for our front end. So to run these, all you have to do is run form and start, and it'll look for a proc file in the folder you're currently in. And when we run this, you'll see we get an error. The error we get here, it, it creates the two process IDs. It starts the Puma server for Rails, but it runs into this error for npm. And if I actually run a npm run dev right now, you'll see a, a similar error where it tells us no such file or directory is open. So you can see that the errors it pipes out here are essentially the same errors you would get if you tried to run these commands uh, independent of Foreman. The reason why we're getting this error, of course, is because we are currently inside of our Rails app. We are not inside of our front end. So to actually run this command for Foreman, we have to make sure that we first CD into our front end app, and then we can add two ampersands to concatenate these commands. So now it'll run CD front end and it'll run npm run dev. So if we now try to run a form and start, the first thing it tries to do is start the Vite server. And you can see here port 3000 is already in use, so we're trying another one. So because it's npm and it's not Rails, which is uh, kind of cringe sometimes, uh, npm will say there's a port in use, so I'm just gonna use a different port. Rails, of course, has its own issues where if the port's in use, it's just gonna blow up in your face. But in this case, it actually runs the Puma server on port 5000. So we can come over here, we can refresh our port 3001 application. That works just fine. We now have a React app running here. And we can refresh our port 5000 server and go to slash posts. And you can see we have our uh, Rails app running here. And we still have our default application here that's running on port uh, 3000 and working just fine because it's unrelated to these two. But what happens if I stop my Linktree server and I bump up the font size so you can see what I'm doing here. But what happens if I take the Linktree server and I say, all right, Rails S dash P port 5000. I'm gonna run this on port five, oops, I'm gonna stop the Foreman server and then I'm gonna run this on port 5000. So that should be running now. Let me come over here and just check by going to port 5000. So there we go. Uh, the server is now running on port 5000. Let's now try and start the Foreman server with this same command. And you can see here, we get the same error where it tells us uh, whatever the Rails server would tell us, which in this case is error address in use. We can create a uh, .env file in our server or inside of our project here. So we'll do new file dot env and inside of our env we'll say port is equal to 5001 we can then come into our proc file and instead of doing rails s we can do rails s dash p dollar sign all caps port because that's what we called our port and that side of our env file let's now try to stop our server and as soon as it decides it wants to do that let's run a form and start again and you can see now it's listening on port 5001. So that's just a way for you to configure your ports here in, in a manner that doesn't require you to hard code them so much. So if you had to do multiple things or required your port, you just grab it out of your .env file. Okay, so now that we have that, we uh, 
we could actually change this back to port 5000 because we don't need it to run off of that. But that kind of handles the basic setup for Foreman. Now let's try to connect these to show that we have uh, both of these running at the same time. So what we'll do for this is we will uh, close out our .env, close out our proc file, and close out our post controller. And then we can come into our front end, our SRC file. And in this case, we'll come into our main.jsx. And inside of our main.jsx, we create this app. So we'll come into our app.jsx. And in our app.jsx, we have all this nonsense that the, uh, let me just start the server. We have all this nonsense that the React app creates by default. Of course, we have the Linktree clone running on port 5000, so we can't do that. We have to start the Foreman server again. So we have all of this running, uh, but instead of having it do this weird JS, uh, JSX counter stuff that it's doing here with the uh, React app default boilerplate, we can just grab everything inside of our div here for the app, get rid of it. And then in here, we can just very quickly create a function that gets the, uh, I don't know, the posts out of the Rails server. So we'll start uh, maybe by creating a post. That would be probably a good place to start. So let's uh, just control C to stop the server. We'll run a Rails C and then we'll just say post.create. We'll give it a title of test and a body of words that will create our post. We can then hit control D, control L to clear the console and then form and start again. So that should give us a post here that we can then grab inside of our React app, which now uh, should look like a blank app. So to grab this on start, what we want to do is uh, create a post uh, state. So we'll say this is post and set post. And we want this to be equal to use state for an empty array. And we can do a use effect, a fetch for, uh, I guess in this case, it just wants to do a fetch for some JSON placeholder and then response, whatever, set the data, close this and then do this. So in this case, it's just going out to, I guess, a JSON placeholder website maybe uh, that has some posts. It grabs the response from that request and then it takes the data and sets it inside of the post. So let's just save this, refresh the page and see what happens here. Uh, it really doesn't like that. So let's, instead of fetching from whatever this website is, let's grab HTTP colon slash slash localhost port 5000 slash posts. And then we can try this again. Okay, so I actually had to restart the server there because it really didn't like what I did. Uh, but we have this now set inside of our posts. Let's go into our actual app here and let's just create a H1 that says posts. We can save that, that'll create our post there. And then we can just do a uh, post.map. And then for each of these posts, we can do a div with a key of post.id. Let me bump this up one. We can do a h3 with the post.title, and then we can do a p tag with the post.body. We then come down here and make sure we're closing all of this. Uh, so we need to actually close our div. Once we have our div closed, we can then, oops, come down here, do another parentheses, and that will close off all of our stuff. So if we now save this, you can see we're grabbing the post with the uh, title and the words here inside of our React app. And this is all running out of one window. So we have our entire dev environment here created and we don't have to really go out of our way to do anything. So we can start this uh, in, let's do a Rails C real quick and let's just create a second post. So I'll just say, I don't know, uh, post.create uh, with a title of hello world and a body of lorem ipsum. We'll create that and now if we come over here and refresh you can see we have both of those being displayed uh, and it's pretty much that simple to have your entire stack running through the form engine so yeah that's going to do it for this tutorial uh again i don't really cover everything inside of the proc file here because it's really up to you what you want to do here this is kind of just your scripting environment for whatever your tech stack needs uh, but this is a lot easier than always opening up two windows to run everything because it's, I mean, it's really just writing your two commands once inside of your proc file and calling it a day. Uh, and yeah, I just thought we'd hook it up entirely so you could see that too. 
But yeah, that's going to do it for me. Hopefully this was helpful, and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.